Securing the Next Generation, and um, we're here to share with you something really deep in our hearts. Um, we're just speaking right now. Um, actually, I'm here with my, my brother, Sammy Lawrence. Oh, Sammy Shimler is my name. Yeah, actually, I have two other brothers here. Lawrence Oyo is my name. And then Tony is my name. <laughs> I've got a great group of friends here. Um, we're, we're here to just discuss with you like a few things that we know affect young people. Um, I know that the biggest draw for every person's soul, young, old, kid, whatever, is something bright is getting your attention. So you're walking by, you know, people always say like the world is a city of lights or whatever. You're walking by and then something bright gets your attention. If it's bright enough, it will. If it's not bright enough, it won't get your attention. Yeah. So many things are calling for people. Now, what many, what really, what really calls everyone's attention is power in some form or fashion, some kind of strength somewhere. Yeah. Um, we, you know, in, in many times past, many young people, what calls their attention is um, the affluence or the approval of their peers. Yeah. And that takes you a specific path. Yeah. Some people, it might be ladies. I'm, you know, I have the hearts of many girls, so many people have journeyed in that as well. Some people, they really smart, well, not smart, well, evil wisdom, whatever. They go above that, and they journey into dark powers. Because it's, it's, I'm speaking about this in a negative light here. And they have spiritual power in one, you know, form of fashion. And they journey in that direction as well. Now, the truth is that all, all power, all everything, has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has bestowed that to his people, the church, those people who are disciples, those people who are falling after him. Now, young people, you know, wherever you're at, you know, whatever you're, you're um, I guess like whatever is drawing your attention right now, one huge draw is this thing for power. You know, I guess we should all talk about that, you know, like in all of our experience, we've experienced, you know, in different, whatever that might look like, you know, um, power in terms of um, affluence, the approval of people, um, spiritual power, all this on the positive end when we're pursuing God. Let's just speak about that. You know, have anything to share about that? The average human has this desire for power. It, it's there, there's that vacuum in everybody. And we all try to fill these vacuums through different means. Some get exposed to drugs, some get exposed to cigarettes, some get exposed to women. But Whatever you are doing, if you're doing drugs, if you're doing women, you still know that there's still that vacuum there. No matter how many ladies you get, no matter how much drugs you take, you still feel that vacuum there. It doesn't get satisfied because there's only one person who can fill that vacuum. He put it in there. He put that capacity in every human being to thirst for the divine, to thirst for the spiritual. He's the source of all power. His name is Jesus. He's the only one that could fill in that vacuum. And there's no point trying to dig into what you're doing right now. If you're a drug addict or if you're... Try Jesus. He, he, he will feel satisfied that vacuum. You've tried drugs, you're still feeling empty. You've tried everything, you're still feeling empty. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I remember while growing up, um, one of my cravings was for power. And sincerely, it's still one of my very serious cravings. I just wanted to be supernatural. I just wanted to be more than normal. I just wanted, that's the reason for all those fantasies we used to have as young children. That's the reason why we loved Superman, Spider-Man. We just wanted something that was beyond just sleeping and waking up. We wanted something that was beyond this earthly realm. And, and um, that thing is inside you. It's inside every human being. Desire, the longing for immortality. It is, I like to put it this way, it's, it's so much fun, it's so much, it's so much, it's so interesting. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's more than what this world can give you. I think about it sometimes. Like how, how high can a drug get me? As high as the Holy Ghost can. Uh, it can, it can <laughs> get high. you. It's the most it can, high. That's why it's called <laughs> <laughs> the most high. <laughs> it can get you. It can get you so bold. You walk up to yeah. a madman and tell him, "Come here." Yeah. And 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 you you pray for him and get him healed and it's fine. Because something is moving you that is beyond the normal. You find somebody saying, um, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die for Jesus, and you put a gun on his head, and he doesn't care about his life because something has come over him. There's something that is driving him. And that's the thing, it removes fear. It removes, literally, it removes fear from everything. It gives you total peace, total joy, 
you don't know what that is until you meet with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, there's nothing, there's how far money can take you, there's how far success academically, um, your work, fulfillment in your marriage, everything, there's how far it can take you. The moment you jam this person called Jesus Christ, oh my God, the table's turned. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and the tables literally turn. Yeah, Everything very... becomes supernatural. <laughs> Everybody begins to look at you, even with all they have. They look at you and they are envying you. Right. Because they, right. there's something that there's something about you that you can't explain. They can't explain. It's just a light yeah. in the spirit realm. You begin to glow. Yeah, wicked powers know. They know it. Wicked people know. Yeah. You can tell that there's something about this yeah. guy. In the spirit, your countenance changes. You become light. Okay. And then people can even come around you and just be happy and just be joyful, just be peaceful. This fragrance begins to even spread from you. Okay, yeah, um, this, this has been incredible. I'm, I'm loving this. Um, I, I'm, you know, something that I know hit me really, really, really big about the power of God, you know, that expression or whatever, is change. Yes. That's a major thing, you know. Um, it's something that you mentioned to me a while ago that, you know, even mathematics, you know, in physics, mathematics, you know, power is the rate of change or whatever. I can't remember what, what exact concept that is. Forgive me, I'm actually a study for that, whatever. Anyways, um, speaking about the rate of change, though, that shows you how much power you put in. In a specific amount of time, how much change can be caused in that time? Yes, how, exactly. How much work is done there? There we go. Anyway, same thing or whatever, you know. Um, change. You know, there was something I was discussing with a friend a while ago, and the power of the gospel. You know, um, if you really want to see a person, this is going to get really gruesome real quick. If you really want to see who a person really is, you crucify them. When we're saying crucify them, that can have many, that, you know, that not be a literal crucifixion, but just be a, a what we mean by crucify them is an, an open door for evil to manifest really is what crucifixion really means. If there's any evil on the inside of you, that cross will express that thing and show it to you yes. live. Yes. So someone's cross might be having weakness with anger. All of a sudden, everyone around me is irritating me. And then what happens? The cross is that, in that point in time, I have to fight against the, that expression coming forth. Now, the power of God Okay? It's not just that you be well disciplined in those places alone. It's, you know, it starts there. Well, God wants to take us to that place where those things aren't there anymore at all. You can plague me, you can wound me, you can, you can do anything to me, but I'm still, I'm intact. I'm still, I, that's real, that's power, strength beyond what people can see. I'll give you an example. If you dump someone in the middle of um, a place where there is, um, an infestation, a breakout of a disease, like Ebola. Okay, let's say bubonic plague. And in the middle of that plague, a guy is carrying dead bodies of this very contagious disease. You should not come close to anyone, not, not think of carrying the dead bodies. And he's moving them around, and he's fine, with no gloves, bare, bare, <laughs> you know, with his bare hands. You would ask a question. What is it about you that makes you stand out? I'll speak about John G. Lake here. What makes you stand out? There was a power at work in that man. Another example, in the midst of this outbreak right now of sexual perversion and lust, there is going to emerge a breed of pure, unrebukable, untamable, bright lights that will shine in the midst of this dark and perverse generation. And young people will look at them and ask them a question. What is it about you that makes you stand out? Because the truth is that one thing about power as well is that you test strength of a person in difficult circumstances. We talk about the cross. The strength of Jesus Christ, you know, his love is not just shown when everything is nice. Oh, he pets little kids on the heads, kisses their heads. Evil people do that. I'm very sure Hitler at some point kissed a baby. <laughs> you know, I'm not the most evil person, but I'm getting a point across here, you know. That's when the makeup's on, everything is nice, the AC's on, everyone is fine, everyone has their, you know, suit and tie, everything's all good. But when you go to the desert, the wilderness, and then all the feathers are getting ruffled. Oh my goodness. He's getting crucified, mauled, innocent man getting beaten to death, tortured, his bones are completely exposed. And his heart cry, when you expose everything on the inside of him, all he can cry out is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Showing the thing running on the inside of him was more powerful than those nails, more powerful than that cross, more powerful than anything. That, that's, that's power on the inside. Now, I believe that that's something that young people 
oh my goodness, there is no baby Holy Spirit. There yes. is no teenage yes. Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. There is no anything like, like that. Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost. And we need to jam him hardcore and experience all that he has you know, for us. Do you want to share some more about that? <laughs> okay, yeah. So much has been said by Francis. I'm talking about the power. There's much craving for power. But I want you to know something that the Bible says that he has it's about that the children, the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders. And another place in the scriptures also says that for as many who has believed in me, has given them power to become sons of God. And that translation says children of God. Now I'm going to I'll go into into fold. What are you looking for? What are you desiring? Are you desiring to to have power? Now there are certain told Jesus Christ that bow down to me and I will give you the whole world. I will give you power. I will give you all this. But one thing you should also realize that Satan does not give you anything for free. He has a purpose. That's right. That's right. And, the, and the Bible says that he has come to steal, yes, yes. to kill, yes. and to destroy. Yes. That's what Satan is going to offer. That's the end product of it. Like someone said, if you are to, if you are to ask Satan that come and take over Lagos State, or come and or be the president of Nigeria or he will tell you I don't want it I would even give you America and give you the world what he's looking for is not the nations yes. what he's looking for is you, you. <laughs> so the question is do you want to go in his own path his own path is very easy his own path is very it's, it's not going to cost you anything but it is a very broad way like yes, said, yeah. but I bet it with you there's a way that seems good to man yeah. But your end will be destruction. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. So I want you to, to check what are you looking for? Are you looking for that part that seems good, that will make you feel powerful? Let me tell you something. Christ is more powerful. Jesus is more powerful. The Holy Ghost is more powerful. And the Bible also says that, you know, but to them that believe, but to them that believe, say that this sign, this sign shall follow them. To them that believe, do you want to cast out demons? Do you want to do great things? Come and meet the Holy Ghost. Let come and meet Jesus, and you will have greater things. There is much more in God. There is so much. There is great adventure in God. You might be having an issue with also. You might be having an issue with sin. You might have an issue with with fun, with um, little petty lies and everything. But there's a power in God that can save you. There is more, there's enough grace available. And the grace is still in the Holy Ghost. So do you want power? You have it in the Holy Ghost. And do you want to be free from sin? You have it in the Holy Ghost. You see, uh, the, talking about change and, and uh, the power of God, I, I began to think, um, why is it? Of course, we know philosophy has failed. Psychology has failed. And why is it that these things do not have a lasting impact on who we're trying to change because the source is external yes the yes, problem yes. is internal and so the perfect solution should be an internal solution and that is why when you receive Jesus you see something happens something is born in 2 Corinthians 5 7 it says you become a new man and so that is the perfect only solution to this problem and this is the reason why the word works Jesus works because once it comes into you it makes you a new man and this is uh, only the tip of the iceberg of what we present Jam, which is coming up 19 December. It's gonna be awesome. Jesus is everywhere, of course. He's always with us, but there's gonna be a downpour, a download, and you're gonna meet people like you who are on fire for God, who are not just possessing power, but releasing into the environment. You see, the Lord began to teach us how to release this power to environment so that you're in a place where a bomb is littered but the bomb cannot explode because there is something from you that is altering the capacity of the bomb you are possessing the author of creation who makes everything in him everything consists because you are altering environments around you we 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 grow to the point where you bring sick bodies just around us and something is released from us that touches them you talked about a madman you're, you're in the presence of a madman and you just say, come. But it's not just about what you're saying. What are you saying? Come here. There's something you're releasing. 
You see, he senses, he knows it. Demons know this, they, they sense this, they know this. Glory to God. And, and Holy Ghost Jam, for those of you who are battling with conditions, the Lord is going to be present to touch you. Addictions are going to be broken. The power of God is going to be in display like never before. Youths are going to be rolling off for God. Souls are going to be born. Changes are going to happen on the inside because Jesus is going to be there with us. And it's on the 19th of December at Lagos Tea House at Maralti Way, Lekki. Uh, we'll see you there. God bless you. See you there. We'll see you there. <laughs> see you there.